Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. It's mid-August. Going to give you a tour of the outside of the house and property. We've made a lot of changes. The house is now white. The porch is no longer orange. We have the fence in this space whitewashed. Hey, Tuck. This space is actually set up for grandkids, but we do have Tucker, our grand puppy now, and he does love this space. I also wanted to talk about this peach tree. If you're tree. looking for a great peach tree in Maryland Zone 7, this is the contender. I highly recommend it. Got it at Home Depot. I did pick 12 peaches off of here, the sweetest peaches I ever had. And as I walk around and give you a tour, I'm going to cut in some old footage so you can see what the property used to look but like. This is the homestead as of the middle of August. We love the white paint. This is actually alabaster on the house. And I'm just going to walk my way down here. We'll get to the garden. We'll do a tour in there. But I just wanted to show you the changes. Oh, starting to come down. I'm not sure what I'm going to do over in that space. I was going to put more apple trees and plum trees out there, but I'll show you what I'm doing with those. Maybe get some help with a suggestion. Coming inside of the yard, and let me just give you a quick look. The fence is all in. This is something we've been planning for years, saving money, looking for a property, and we're very excited that the dream is really starting to fall in place. So this was all yellow. There was a big red deck there. We'll get closer to that in a second. Again, I still have tags on my peach or my fruit trees. I haven't even marked them down in a book yet. I did do a video on them. But look at the two beautiful peaches. So we're hoping or pears. So we're hoping next year the fruit trees have established and we start getting, you know, regular fruit off the trees. One of my goals I talked about in other videos was really making this an edible landscape, breaking it up into different rooms, outdoor rooms. And I have strawberries and raspberries right in there. Let's go inside here. And I like how we changed the deck up. A lot of people said keep the ramp. Nobody really liked the color. But we kind of compromised. We painted our house. It is now actually an alabaster white. We removed this ramp that used to be that red color and it was actually a big ramp. And we kind of compromised in that we did levels and it kind of works its way down right to here. Before I can paint the fence. So one thing that I changed is I took the railings down in many of the, you know, oh, the sides of this ramp. This is gonna be painted white. I left the corners in where it's flat and you know dropped in some wrought iron furniture. In this space I brought in um, five more or four more blueberry bushes. They've been dropped. They're close. They're going to be more of a hedge. And these are perennials from my previous homestead or previous house. So right in here, strawberries, blueberries. And this is the compromise that we did for the deck. We did it in steps coming down. I really like it. Has sort of a, I don't know, Japanese feel for it where we can walk through here and just look at the different flowers, blueberries. The kitchen garden is over there. The deck is covered in mud from you know who. In the process of really cleaning this up. So from Here's here. Here's the space I'm going to be working on first. Just wanted to put this clip in so you could see the before and after. I'll probably use this in several places. I'll be dropping four by four raised beds down probably right in there. I planted strawberries, raspberries. I talked about that. This is really a place for me to get them established, let them multiply, and next year I'll be moving them into different places. Here's a little bit of what the garden will look like come next year. I'll have tomatoes in here, kale, Swiss charge stuff that you can come out and just pick from the door without having to go out there into the main garden. I just want to show people this too. This is uh, kale and cabbage and this is, has not been sprayed. So a lot of people say, well, your garden will just take care of itself. That's sort of true if you're in the zone where your garden will take care of itself. If I don't spray and take care of the problems most of my crops would look like this. And then you can see this new growth. That's where I came in and actually put dust on here. I'm not eating this, it was more of an experiment. So even with letting this go, waiting for the good insects to come in, you still end up having problems. So just because you have problems in your garden doesn't mean you're doing something wrong. And that's just what I wanted to point out. We're gonna go over to the butterfly garden. It's loaded with butterflies, I'll talk about that. 
but I just want to give you a view from here. So if we're just sitting, and this is part of my design, that if we're just sitting here eating, I can look around through different parts of the yard and just get different perspectives. That was all cinder block. We had it changed over to look just like that so it kind of blends into the landscape more. We'll get over to those boxes. All the red decking that was here was power washed off and I repurposed it. I'll talk about that in a second. All right, let's walk over to the butterfly garden. The garden fence is not coming today, so it's about a week delayed now. It'll probably come in the middle of the week. That's all right. That should be up soon. I'll talk more about that when we get there. This is gonna be set up with uh, butterfly bushes, perennial flowers, all mulched out. And I'm trying to decide if I'm going to keep some of the fruit trees over on this side of the yard. I have plums, apple trees here. Some of them are dwarf varieties. But I'm just trying to figure out now, moving them around, letting them sit there for a while and see you know, what I like. The whole strategy here is to make sure the trees don't grow and then shade off places I wanna grow vegetables. So this is the walk up to the butterfly garden. And again, I'm trying to design spaces here you can kind of wander through. This is another look into the kitchen garden and the sitting area. And I just, I enjoyed it. It's just peaceful. I encourage you to, you know, create your space, your homestead. If it's smaller, that's fine. If it's bigger, that's great. But whatever you create, go out and enjoy it. Just walk around, relax. So this is the butterfly area. I'm gonna cut into here too. I shot some video a couple this days ago. The uh, tree that was dead, cut it down. I left the tree in the garden, sort of as a memorial, but I really planted this with three apple trees and a bunch of butterfly bushes, butterfly weed, anything that will attract the butterflies. In this place, it's the evening now. Let's see if we can find some caterpillars. So this is what the monarchs enjoy. I just planted some milkweed right in there. You can see caterpillar too, or there's just one right in there. Also, you can see all these aphids. So the milkweed, the butterfly weed, look at all those. Will bring in aphids. And can see all the white moths that lead, lead yeah that lay the eggs for the green cabbage looper so the butterfly weed will bring in aphids and you might think well why aren't you killing these off they're everywhere and the reason being is because right up here is a ladybug right on cue if ladybugs have food they're going to settle. Look at all those aphids I'm leaving on there. If the ladybugs can find food, they're going to nest. They're going to hang around. They're going to make a home around here. And the aphids are away from the garden. Garden's right over there. So I'm letting this be a place where nature can do its thing. Aphids, ladybugs, they'll be happy. They'll eat the aphids. The aphids stay away from my garden. Butterflies come in. And then the ladybugs will travel over there and take care of problems. So you want to have a space like this, I think, in your yard where you can grow flowers, attract beneficial insects, you know, and just let nature do the thing. And there's probably more caterpillars. These are all seed pods. You can see that they're opening. Oh, there's one right in there. So the seed pods will spread through this area and this is just going to be a really nice place to sit, hang out, and enjoy nature. If we give this a little shake, you're just going to see all the butterflies are here. And then coming around in here I got some apple trees. So that's one bench I made out of the old red decking, repurposed the wood. Also in here I have artichokes, growing them for the first time, but they're supposed to be deer resistant, rabbit resistant, although that's only partially true, but I will have the artichokes in there. 
added this in there, just weeded it out. All animal or, well, rabbit, deer resistant plants supposed to be in there. Those are goji berries, the bigger bushes in the back, keeping up with the idea of creating that edible landscape. So right in this space, I made raised beds. Probably gonna grow some garlic in here, flowers. I'm not sure exactly what. If you want to burn out the grass before you drop down mulch, one thing that works really well, let me walk in here and grab it, is 30% vinegar. You gotta order this online. You can cut it down to about a 20% ratio, but you can just put it into a sprayer. And here's my fear that he's gonna learn how to jump over that fence. Cool it, Tuck. You can go and just spray the 20%, 30% white vinegar down here before the mulch. It's not gonna kill out the roots, but it's gonna kill the top growth. And then you put the mulch down and it's a nice green, safer way to take care of the grass. And you can see that I did it in certain spaces. And again, you have to get it online. It's not really that expensive. The stuff you buy in a grocery store, that's like, I don't know, like a 3% solution or something. Um, it's just not strong enough to kill off the grass. But I made some raised beds. Gonna fill those with mulch. I'm gonna add in higher nitrogen fertilizer and really gonna be growing in basically wood chips, but it's double shredded hardwood. Bench table there. Built this space. Are these caps here from, again, from the deck and that's where the septic, uh, septic system caps were. That's a faux water pump, but it is an antique. And then we pulled the back porch out, took care of that, and it's just a great sitting area. You can see, well, if you got good eyes, you can see my slippers up there. I like to come out here and well, let's actually walk up. This is up. the backyard. Needed 200 feet of hose to get to the corners of my yard. All the grass is coming in. We just ordered a uh, tractor mower. That should be in uh, on the 15th. Here's where we've been watching the birds. And here, well, let's end here. And this is the other side of the front yard. I like to come out here in the morning, have my coffee. We come out here in the evening. And again, it's another perspective of the yard, of the homestead. So we're sitting here and I just love this view. Fire pits over there that I built. The garden's doing really well. We've had crazy humidity now along with the heat a lot of stuff is rotting out there faster than I give it a, can give it away so here's a different angle and we had the deck extended out removed the bushes that were there it was all orange planking the posts you may not be able to see but they're a little bit curved but they were really badly curved we had them covered and, and fixed up a little bit but I'm really enjoying being able to come out sit in this space and then be able to just kind of take a look at the entire property. At night it's really nice with the stars out. And I really encourage everybody to enjoy what you're so creating. We're gonna walk in there. Just look to see what's going on with the diseases and I'm gonna just clean it out again. I'm hoping this is the last time I have to do a lot of maintenance for diseases. Don't like food being wasted. Um, but I just can't get to it quick enough with working and everything going on and I give away tons of stuff. Also made this potting bench which is pretty cool. It's stomach high so I can just come over here and work without having to sit or bend over. Bend down to reach things. Cucumber. Here's a new orange rust on there. That might be for mushrooms growing around. I think it was. I think mushrooms popped up and then they just fell on there. But I can see powdery mildew creeping in. Okay, let's walk into the garden. So this is how I make the rustic or the rusted garden. Cucumber tomato salad. Couple of tips. Thinly sliced cucumbers. There's about three six inch cucumbers in there and then thinly sliced onion. And the reason you want to do, you want to do that is you want more surface area. You want to pull out the flavors of the cucumber and the onion. And the way you do that is take a pinch of coarse salt, you want the coarse salt, mix it across your cucumbers and onions, and then let that sit there for about 10 minutes. The salt will pull out 
the juice from the liquid from the cucumber and the onions. It'll add more of that flavor into your cucumber tomato salad. Some quick foreshadowing of what I'm making. So I'm gonna let that sit for about 10 minutes. I'm gonna chunk up the tomatoes. Today I'm also gonna add in some okra, thin, thinly sliced okra. It does really well in your cucumber tomato salads when you're using vinegar. I recommend red wine vinegar. I just don't have enough, so I'm gonna add in a little bit of the uh, white vinegar. Um, you want an acidic vinegar. You don't want something sweet like a balsamic or kind of a raspberry. You can use that if you want, but this recipe I go with you know, something acidic. And then just plain old olive oil. I also see I have to pull out the pepper and the garlic powder. But let me cut these up and I'll get back. So I cut up the tomatoes, kind of thinly, nice thin slices of the okra. You don't need to put the okra in, but I'm just adding it. It's all ready this year. So, and I really like it. I started growing this about three years ago, um, and I absolutely love it. Typically, I just eat it raw. It's good to have um, basically kind of this mucusy feel to it, but that don't let that gross you out. It's absolutely delicious, and it's really good raw. And when you mix it in with the vinegar, everything really breaks down in there. So after the salt has sit on the cucumbers, the first thing I do is I just go in and I really crunch it up. You really want the flavor of the cukes and the onion to come out. At this point, add in pepper to taste. I don't mind a little bit of spice. I put a lot in there. If you had fresh garlic, I would be chopping up fresh garlic. I don't have any. Subscribe to my channel and this, this October I'll be planting fresh garlic. I'll show you how to do that. And just mix this through. You're basically setting it up with the cucumber and onion flavors and then drop in your tomatoes and if you want you could add in okra. You could also put in sweet peppers. You could put in a jalapeno. However you want to do it. I'm not going to be able to do this with one hand so let me put this in here and then I'll show you how I drop in the oil and the vinegars. So that's everything in a bowl. And again, I don't really measure. You don't have to just do it to taste. So about that much red vinegar, that might actually be enough. Sometimes I make a larger bowl. Actually, I want a little bit more. I highly recommend the red vinegar, but in a pinch, throw in some white vinegar. Another pinch of salt. Use less salt if you don't like it. And then a nice amount of the olive oil. And this is the basic setup for my cucumber tomato salads. This is the point I don't want to smash the tomatoes. I like to leave them intact and I just fold everything over, get it well mixed. And I actually like serving it at room temperature. I do refrigerate it, of course, to keep it, but I usually take it out about an hour before I eat it because I like having this at room temperature. I think the flavor is better. You don't want it cold because I think it kind of hides the taste because it's cold and it freezes your taste buds a little bit. That's my standard cucumber salad. I make this just about every two or three days when the cucumbers are rolling in. All right, let's get back to the video. Oh wait, I forgot the Parmesan cheese. I forgot to take it out. You can add in Parmesan cheese, really any cheese I guess if you like, but I find the Parmesan is the best. And this is what I enjoy, like I said, a couple times a week. All right, now back to the video. Generally speaking, things are doing well. I'm happy with how things are middle of August. Some of the blueberry plants look like they're dying out. Tomatoes, I've had lots of caterpillars of different types coming in here. Not the tomato hornworm that shreds down the leaves, but lots of holes in the tomatoes. You know, I'm getting most of them, but the cherry tomatoes now are flying in and they're just starting to rot. I don't like it. Here's that. the other container garden doing extremely well. This is where I'm growing lots of flowers to bring in pollinators. These are the first tomato plants I put in. They're getting to size. I'm going to continue to prune them, manage Here them. Here is my pepper tower that I let dry out and forgot about. So I'm going to clean that out too. But it's doing well. I'll keep the herbs in there. They come back every year. But I'm going to pull off what I can there. Start drying them. Second wave Oh yeah, look at the destruction. Again, I just want to stress the destruction that can come. Look at all that, those green droppings. Those are from different caterpillars. We probably could find them in here. But again, just because people say, oh, I don't have any problems. You can see the worms hanging right down there. I don't have any problems. Nature takes care of it. That is great if you happen to be in that zone. But gardens don't typically work like that. 
you do have to use products to take care of pests and disease. Okra, second wave of okra. The arch is doing really well. Green beans I've been picking off of there. Another wave of tomatoes tucked in there. These are my fruit vines that I need to get planted. Growing flowers in the tower, that's my ladybug and good bug hotel, so to speak. Looking pretty good. And like I said, generally speaking, I'm really happy with how everything is going. This morning I came in, dropped dust down, I'll show you why. Gonna rinse that off now, actually. Usually I do it at night, but I kept missing it. So the eggplant were covered in flea beetles. I'll wash that off now. That'll take care of the flea beetles. Coming over here, the Brussels sprouts were devastated. And this is just me not paying attention for four or five days. And you can see the caterpillar in there. These are different insects coming in. I'm not used to this kind of devastation in such a short period. Anyway, I'll clean that up. Things are going well. Another wave of cucumbers. This area has been producing like crazy. There's more to come off. I'm about to pull this out because they're starting to die off. I mean, the cucumbers are just rolling in super fast. These are the pickling cucumbers. My first wave of okra. These are yard long beans. When they get that long, you can't really cut them up and you know, cook them that way, but you can let them mature, harvest the seeds, cook with the seeds. The tomato hedge is doing better than I ever thought, but that's one area that, you know, things are starting to split and rot. So I'm gonna get in there and clean out everything. Probably give it another feeding. Got busy, missed taking care of that plant. We'll be planting up the container soon. Just did a video on your fall garden and growing things in flower boxes. So this is my fall garden in three flats. I mean, as you know, we were walking around, you can see I've got a lot of my summer crops in there. I'll be taking out some of them. But in the meantime, start your plants in, pl in flats for the fall. And as you clear out your garden, you could have plants that are ready to drop in. These will germinate really in five days or so because it's so warm. Make sure you manage the moisture. Don't let them sit in the full sun. I just raised them today. Typically they sit under there. When you're starting seeds in flats in the summer, give them a lot of shade. The heat will bake these and kill them off uh, really within a day if you don't give them plenty of shade. But it looks great. There's 10 different varieties in here that will all go out into the garden. It was the video just before this one. But the garden looks pretty good overall. A winter squash that's going crazy. Another wave of zucchini. I pulled out a couple plants that weren't so good. You could see a dead zuc plant right there. That's just because it wasn't pollinated. Nice healthy one over there. Tomato tower was more successful than I thought. I will not plant that many plants in there next time, but you definitely can grow tomatoes in the tower. And just a couple different perspectives of what's happening in the garden. And then this space, I did just get a tiller. I'm gonna till up this area, do something here, maybe some more raised beds in the back. And this is something I'm working on. Video will be coming out probably this week. This is all filled with mulch on the right. So it's just, they're just gonna be grown in wood chips. And finally, let's go up here. These are squash plants that I've been taking care of and spraying. Asparagus looks good. Oh, well, here you go. So I think that rust on that cucumber was for mushrooms. They're just popping up everywhere because of the ridiculous humidity. And the asparagus is looking good. I'm gonna get in here and actually drop cardboard all around there and more mulch and just get rid of all that grass. Here's a great example of the powdery mildew coming back. This is the plant that I worked on several, several weeks ago and I'm still pulling squash off of there. 
but it is now covered in powdery mildew. I will probably cut this plant back really hard and just leave that. And then you can see how that will grow into a large plant again. And a hop squash, you know, probably in the be beginning of, of September. So the beans are doing really well. All this damage on here is really typically from spider mites. I started spraying my peppermint oil in there again and it's starting to get things under control. Be harvesting all the beans. These are a yellow bean. But I'm really happy with how this area worked. Of course I got my cattle panel, so I'll be changing this up, but these will be getting moved to different places. And more, I think these are rattlesnake beans, all ready to be picked. I have potatoes I haven't harvested yet. But the trellising is working really well. And I expect, hopefully, to be getting beans all the way, you know, into late September. These are potatoes I didn't harvest. These are planted in the spring, and you can see they're starting to sprout again. So you can actually drop potatoes again, at least in Maryland Zone 7 and similar zones, in August, later July, and you can get a fall crop of potatoes. We'll see how they go. So here's the garden as the end of May. I'm really proud of what's been going on, really enjoy it. Like seeing the growth, maybe sometimes more than harvesting vegetables. That's shade cloth there, by the way. I'll show you how to use that in a future video. But everything is coming in, mostly to plan. I kind of sculpt as I go along, but I do have a plan kind of in my mind. But I look to see what the land gives you and kind of build from what I want to what I can do on the Thanks land. so much for being part of the Rusted Garden Homestead and letting me share what I'm doing. I really enjoy it. I hope that it helps you all out with developing your gardens, your homestead, your space. It's just relaxing. I mean, I can hear the cicadas in the back. You know, they drown out the road noise. Please take the time. Enjoy the things that you create. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. And enjoy your weekend.